Farming is a profession of hope. Brian Bett says that. Today we are in the House of Hope Dairy Farm. It has been a journey of 21 years. Out of the 21 years, 8 years is the real dairy farming. The other years was really just keeping cows. I'm sure you're wondering what we mean by just keeping cows and what you are calling the active dairy farming. That is what we are about to, to break down. But before that, you'll wish to see an overview of this house of hope. And have you, have you heard what a brand bet says? It's a profession of hope. And we're in the house of hope. There is really a great hope in this dairy farm. Joining us is Bona Moses. He's the proprietor of this venture. He's doing very well. As this is an arid and semi-arid areas of Asiokimau. Very dry, a lot of challenges, but there's also huge opportunities. Bona Moses. Asante sana. Karibu sana. Yes. Uh, we will be glad if you take us through the dairy farm. We see the overview. Then thereafter, you can introduce yourself. But maybe you can say one word or two. Well, uh, Karibu Nisana to House of Hope Dairy Farm. As you heard, my name is Moses uh, Basigo Karioki. Um, I'm the director of the institution. We have a school that has the dairy farm. Been here for about 21 years, as uh, Chogona has said. And uh, of those 21 years, we've always had cows. We brought cows. The first cow came because we wanted to get some milk for the children who are in the school. And since then, we've been going on building slowly by slowly. So that's why we came up with the dairy farm that we have. Um, and it has been a long journey from about uh, one cow to almost 60 that we have currently. And uh, a lesson, lessons slowly by slowly. We have just been learning lessons. Bonamos is... Sijuinisem, there is a good uh, friend of ours in our WhatsApp group called Jeff. Eh? Mm -hmm. He normally re uh, like referring to cow to some farmers as rich farmers, <laughs> rich cows. <laughs> now I can see you are wasting a lot of hay here. You are stepping on it. It's uh, soaking. What is really going uh, here? All well, it's just the rich cow syndrome. Well, uh, <laughs> what this is what we call a foot bath, and uh, what we do is that uh, for especially for anybody who is coming into the dairy farm, we want to make sure that the feet are disinfected. So upper. Kuna people will usually have very fancy things in terms of uh, maybe mats, uh, some special blankets. Mimi nile nyasi tunakata hapa hivi kwa shule, tunakuja tunayeka hapa hivi, ndo tunayangeza maji, then you put something like a carol or noroclens, just to make sure that uh, whenever somebody steps here, when they're getting into the farm, their feet are disinfected. And I can see it's big enough even uh, when a truck yes, yes, yes. wants they to get actually, in, it has to... Yes, the size itself is designed because of a truck, because we also have like our own pickup that goes to fetch a napier in the school farm, and then uh, and also fetch some grass. So Kilowakati, any car that gets in, it has to soak itself here. Yeah. Uh, what is the what is really inside here? Because I can see something watery, watery. Um, ideally here, what you do is that... Uh, you just need water mixed with a disinfectant. But the problem is that, as you mentioned, we're in an arid and semi-arid area, so evaporation rates are very high. So, ukiweka maji hapa na kero lama norokla inspeke yake, within a few minutes you'll find it has evaporated. So, what we have, we put uh, some, some grass just to hold the wetness, so that evaporation does, is not that far. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, the next time I come with my Italian uh, shoe, I don't <laughs> think I'll be so much willing to step there. Well, what I usually <laughs> say is that uh, if somebody cannot step there, then you might not be able to visit the farm. <laughs> what is really happening here? Um, so here, what we have, this is our uh, fodder section. This is where we prepare our feeds. Uh, as you can see, kawaida, as in many places, kuna shaf kata pale. Um, what we have here, we prepare the feeds from the farm. Um, we have uh, the, as you can see behind there, there are some cubicles. Those are silage. That is silage. And uh, this is napia, fresh from the farm. And uh, we bring it here. Uh, we chop it. As you can see, very fine chopping because our, we want the shaft, uh, the shaft cutter is well serviced. We make sure that it is checked every day before usage in a cut of very fine pieces that a cow is able to uh, consume quite well. So I tell farmers all the time, shaft cutter, chunga vizuri, make sure it is well serviced. Uh, the more blunt the shaft cutter is, the more vigorous it has to work, the more it gets spoiled. 
and the motor becomes spoiled. Yeah, this you can. Is, you yes. are running using the electricity. Yeah, that's an electricity. Yeah, we three use blades. Electricity. Yes, three blades. Yes, and then these are also feeds. Other feeds from the farm. Uh, I call it a mixed grill. Apo kuna napia, kuna some fresh maize. These are fodder bits, good for uh, energy for cows. Yeah, so these one not you, this is one heap like this will be mixed with uh, maize silage. It will also be mixed with uh, this heap here has a uh, pineapple pulp. So yeah, that's what we do. I can see still another machine here. I yes. believe that one is a chopper. Yes, this is a this is a chopper. What it does is that when we need to make a, like when we need to chop like. Uh, hay, that's what you usually use. Um, but most of the time, if you have adequate nappy and you have hay, you put it in the middle of the uh, in the middle of nappy. You make a hay katikati shaft cutter does it well. This is what you use to sharpen the shaft cutter. What we do, uh, you have to you, you have to have a trade off. Shaft cutter ili unataka ikuwe sharp, lakini pia ukikuwa unatumia grinder kila wakati utamaliza blades haraka. So what we do once a week Saturday, guza na, na grinder, the rest of the week to mere fire. So you sharpen in every but every morning it has to be you sharpened. have to sharpen yes before you every morning yes because a, the rule is the more blunt the the blades are the more vigorous the shaft cutter works the more it breaks everything and everything you are seeing here you have produced it in the farm yes all this is from our here farm. in Machakos county yes 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 and yes. it's green the napier the green napier the fresh maize the fodder beets and you get to have a chance to go down to the farm you'll see all this we produce it right here wow i believe it will be an amazing <laughs> journey going and seeing whatever yes. you're doing there in the shamba yes, yes, yes wow it's so this is a good job getting everything green in uh Majakos. what do you have here so that is uh this is a pile of pineapple pulp we get from uh, uh del monte so what we do is that uh, we mix we try and mix uh, we want to have some part of the feeds coming from our farm some part of the feed is what we acquire what do we acquire the pineapple pulp and the cubicles there where you're seeing the maize silage so we combine that and uh, by growing our own feed a little bit uh, we say that we want to produce a certain percentage of what the cows eat so that at least it helps us to uh, minimize on the costs but Moses, i can see you have uh, grouped your cows yes. i can see small sized cows i can see some cows there with some nice looking adder Maybe you can uh, take us uh, briefly on what, uh, how you have classified the, the cows. Well, it's by default. Uh, no, no, actually it's by age. So what we do is that, uh, like, uh, these ones are, the just been weaned. Uh, actually, the ones that have just been weaned. Um, then these ones are maybe about uh, five months, going to about seven months. And then the next group here is from seven months, going to about ten months. And then uh, after that, we have this other one, which is like the 10 months going to the yearlings. And uh, so this is about where we start, we start uh, making sure that uh, we, are, we are watching for heat and uh, checking the weights that uh, you want it to be about 320, 340 kilograms by the time it's uh, ready for insemination. Then these ones are the ones that have recently been inseminated. So they are about 14 going to... 17 months so these are already inseminated yes, these are already inseminated some of them are actually about 20 months they are going now to uh, maybe their last trimester right now wow and then now this other side uh, this side here we have uh, the these are our dry cows uh, we're waiting for them to uh, give birth actually these are the ones that are not being steamed they've uh, we dry our cows uh, Two, for two months. The first month is uh, after uh, lactation, after milking, and then we give them that period where they rest, and then after that we start steaming. These ones are heifers that are currently being steamed. So again, uh, I usually say the productivity of a farm is when you have new entrants into the production process. For farmers, always understand, ile ngombe ambao unakamua, umekuwa kikamua hapo hakunanga change inashinanga tu ikiji replace inakuwa na maziwa na inatoa maziwa tena inakuwa dry but any time that you have a heifer that comes into production now your farm has grown so always uh, for my team i tell my team that nikikuja kwa shamba sianzangi na wale wanatoa maziwa na nzanga na wale wana grow wale wanakuja kutoa maziwa ndio tujue kwamba our farm is growing i mean love with this uh, bella 
Oh yeah. Looks she's... like a more friendly cow. It's a heifer. She's a heifer. Wow. She's a, a cross of uh, Fleck V and uh, Frisian. Wow. Yes. Uh, and in all this classification, uh, all the grouping of these cows, the feeding is totally different. Yes, it's always different based on the lactation of the cow and also maybe the, the ages of the cow. Here we have the most delicate of the group. These are the very young ones. Sorry. Oh, these are very cool. Uh, <laughs> yes. So this one so really cool. need uh, a place. We try and keep them uh, raised. Uh, small calves. These ones are still uh, taking milk. So between one and three months. Try and keep them as individual as possible. But sometimes uh, we might end up having two of them if they, it's a, a, a high calving period. But you can see what does it have. This cal each of the calves has uh, two. There's a trough here with some pellets. Uh, these are calf pellets. And then later on, once it finishes, we'll put for it some little bit of hay clean water, and another trough at the back that has uh, some uh, mineral salt just for the calf to be comfortable and make sure that in a cooler vizuri by the time in Africa kuwacha kukunyo maziwa Why are you placing grass uh, on them? Why okay. are you placing grass here? Yes, these uh, the the floor near Mawe and uh, so it can be a bit uh, cold the grass helps to insulate, to make sure that there is enough heat and also it's not slippery. So that's how we... And also ensure that also we don't dry. Uh, yes. And the tena inyasi tena ni ili ambayo ni metuwa pale kwa shamba. We economize. Bala kutunua mats, wakati mgini azikondogo. Wakati mgini mkulima na grupo. That's what we usually say. And then, uh, so now this side, what you can see here, these are our... Uh, product, uh, producing uh, ladies and uh, on both sides of this corridor uh, so we have uh, various uh, cows different types of cows they are mainly most of them are Holstein Frisians there's uh, some of them yeah I think there's a Fleck V there there's also a small Jersey there uh, my I, my target or Katina Ngalia Mambo Yangombe is that what can a cow produce in a in a in a profitable manner what can a cow comfortably produce wakati unajua kwamba mkulima bado anabaki na kitu kwa mfuko na what's your your, your 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 best producer here how many liters a day um we have uh, i think we have there's a, a girl there called Coletta there's another one called Corina they produce about uh, 33 30 to 33 liters um, on average, our cows do about between 23 and 27 liters. Even her, she's a jazzy, and she does about 22 liters. Wow. It's very little. In fact, I usually say, mkulima wakati unajifundisha, mkulima mpia, tafuta kitu kama hii. Inakula very little. I think, if I'm not wrong, hii ya yezi maliza ndo tatu za silage kwa siku. Na itatoa 20 liters. Wow, Na that's a nice production. Na mgonjwa, haikui mgonjwa, inanga mamashida mingi, jazzy za hadi. So kama ni mkulima if you are a new farmer before don't just start being uh, you are starting a dairy farm na umekimbilia Holstein inakuja with all the pressure unasikianga damu inakuwa uh, you always feeling uh, stressed something like this can help you win you into farming how many cows are you milking so currently we are milking about 26 cows 26 cows yes. and overall yeah. we have about 56 so the rest are growing hard yes and we started from about i think one one of them one of them. <laughs> yes. You had one cow. We did buy a little bit, about maybe some 10 cows, and things went very wrong. Many died. And it has been, uh, getting here has been a series of horrible mistakes. We'll discuss those horrible <laughs> mistakes. Your best ever pro, uh, top producer in this farm. Uh, we had a cow here. Uh, she was called Nancy. She would do about uh, 37 liters. 37. Yes. That's I'm sure you are so much eager to see 40. Well, yes, we want to see that. But as I say again, also I have to take into consideration Pahali Tuko. Our heat here sometimes, just when you think things are going to get better, the heat stress gets there. Uh, this is our milking parlor. We use a two bucket milking machine, but as you can see, Haiko Hapa, it's in uh, the store. We just did a small uh, localized uh, contraption that brings the vacuum all this side. So that 
i mashini inakuwa iko kando makelele hakuna hapa ya mashini ya kuguruma mashini yangu kiwi ni uchafu maji so here you just have the pipes for milking and the buckets that are placed wakati wa kukamua ngome moja inaingia hapa nyingine hapa dear viewer we have an exclusive video app for you on milking procedures on milking protocols in this farm so you might not do a lot here on the milking but you have an exclusive video Yes. So inside here this is what we call our maternity. Uh, when a cow is almost giving birth, usually like how many here. days to um actually we don't like isolating cows that much because also cows in our experience they get so much stressed. They are But social animals. They are social animals exactly. So tunatafuta wakati ambapo unaona hiyo ngombe tunaona within the next 12 hours going to 18 hours itajifungua. So that's when we bring the cow here. Make sure that that time to make care like uh, some feed, some nice feed, and uh, just try and relieve the stress as much as possible. So that's this is the same. These are that's the reason why this area is like. That. Anything you you add on top of this floor? We will bring some uh, some mats, disinfected mats, because this is a time also when you are even paling mtoto atazaliwa. We'll bring some disinfected mats, and uh, and then as I said, some nice feed, enough water, and then what we'll do is that we'll uh, give her distance. Ngombe wakati ana kokaribu kujifungua you don't just stand where she is you create more stress. So we'll give her enough distance when she starts calving down give her distance to calve down. We our protocol say we give her 30 minutes or slightly more in case we need you see that we need to intervene we intervene but at least it's it's good to give the cow a natural process of giving birth. Wow. Ah yes. uh, cow after calving how many days will the cow spend here? Um actually for us as i said because cows are social animals and uh, i remember one time reading uh, about buffaloes and he said cows and buffaloes are the same family they in the same yes so buffaloes will not be shunned by the other buffaloes because in mezar that the utaenda ukae huko utakuja after a week so what we need for the calf the cow to do is that she gives birth and the calf is received well and uh, we move the calf to a secure place then we wait for the cow to remove the placenta that takes about maybe 4 to 8 hours sometimes maybe 10 hours then once that is done and the cow can eat now we can see that the cow is standing well she's eating and she, the stress levels have reduced then we move her to to among the rest now now there's something i almost forgot to ask her regarding here yes. have you grouped these uh, lactating cows depending on their production or they are just a whole sum uh... no 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 the newly uh, calved cows on the 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 the, 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 far the, end. the far end then these ones are the ones that are in the middle and as we go we go trying to separate into the ones that are milk is reducing until when it's almost drying time <laughs> is it by default it's next to the dry pen well we try <laughs> to <laughs> it <laughs> tend to seem like you're going around like that <laughs> yes it's almost actually that's how you try and group it because we want to do something which even all the staff can understand and they can see the essence of how it goes uh by the, uh, is, why are you using the the plastic containers for for water and not the, uh, the concrete so now we used to have the concrete i used to the trough nilikuwa nimeka tiles na nimeka vizuri sana in a way that you could get uh, magic or image hapo but what i realized all the time the water was always full ngombe hazikunywi maji because the stone trough keeps the water very cold and the cows will drink a little and they don't drink anymore ni kama vile unasikia ukiwa na queue na umeenda uchukue maji kutoka kwa fridge utakunywa kidogo usikie ume nini lakini kama ni ile tunaitanga ya shelf utakunywa mingi so we use the these pails weka kwa jua ichome na jua ngombe itakunywa maji mingi oh why that uh, old uh, the tire yeah we by bringing it up we kind of reduce the ile uchafu that sprinkles around when cows maybe they urinate or they poop and also you find the water becomes is far much more cleaner how, how often do you fill that uh, water trough as as needed i as can needed. say as needed there is someone who is on uh, yes, the lookout yes yes every day what we try and do in our shifts we try and make sure that there's a shift where there's somebody who is all the time checking on uh, the 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 water levels and uh, and refilling What's happening here? Sasa hapa ni pale utensils zetu zile tunatumia eh, kama especially the milk chan zile tunatumia kupeleka maziwa kwa duka eh, zile vyombo za kuoshea eh, also the milking eh, 
the milking chance, zile za milk bucket, that's what we dry here. This we made this just for helping us to dry them. I can see there is a good uh, flow of air. Yes, yes, yes. There's the direct sunlight. Yes, the sun helps uh, really to disinfect. Uh, it's a natural disinfectant. Exactly. Wow. Yes. I can see you have a notice board. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not very sure whether you have allocated us some uh, duties <laughs> today. <laughs> well, actually, this is not more of uh, staff allocation, but more of information about what is going on in the farm during the week. This is something we set up every Saturday or every Sunday. It helps us know like uh, which cows are uh, being milked uh, three times a day, uh, which cows might be milked two times if their production has gone down, which cows are being steamed, which uh, cows are dry, uh, which heifers are still, uh, sorry, which, which cows are being given milk, gani ambazo zimefanyua wini. Also, it helps us to know which cows are, have been inseminated, and uh, maybe when to check if they are pregnant, uh, to confirm if they have gotten pregnant, and which ones are about to give birth. And it gives us an, a, a way for us to be ready. So that uh, ikikuwa ikifika kama wakati ngombe kwa karibu kujifungua, you already know the, the date, the dates that we are, we are ready for. And also maybe some few guidelines like milking procedure, we have it there. Helps my staff, they can always come there and refer on how we milk make sure that we reduce chances of mastitis. That's a big, big, big challenge. As I said, Pali to Mefika, we are a conglomeration of uh, mistakes. <laughs> mastitis kuna wakati likuanga hapa, it was part and parcel of our farm. Inge unge ngingia Pali, inge kuja tanawi kusalimie. But now, <laughs> it is now not a guest. You had an employee called you mastitis. Had, yes, exactly. <laughs> the most expensive. Uh, oh, believe you me. Believe you me. I, I can see you have another board here. Yes. So it's this, still an extension of the same? Yes, it is. Uh, just a summarized thing that uh, especially what we check this week in terms of like uh, the heat cycles. When a cow is inseminated, we check like four cycles. Uh, the subsequent four cycles just to make sure if we see any heat. Because most of the time the cows will come back on heat. If, it was, if the insemination was not successful, it will come back on heat uh, during the next uh, cycle. So we just check like four of them. Definitely Lishika, but obviously the the vet will come to make that confirmation. I can see 28th December to 7th January. That's about 10 days. We are supposed to do pregnancy check for Linda. Yes. Uh, we are supposed to check heat for heat 1 and heat 2 and so others heat 3. Yes, yes, yes. And we have some sort of a treatment there. Yes, yes, yes. This information, who consumes this information? Now, what happens is that uh, based on the records that we have, I'll come here during the we uh, during the weekend, sit down with uh, my supervisors, and we'll draft that. This is from that all those in, all that information there. So this is what you can call the most uh, the most basic. Now, what happens is that by having these cycles here, kama leo tunajua today is fourth January, yes. and I can see there that uh, there's a cow, for example, like Nina. Her cycle one was most probably fourth January. That's why we check from second January to sixth January. To see if we'll see any heat signs. So it's the due date plus minus two. Yes, that's the, exactly the date of the yeah, when we expect the, the, the heat. So if it's like uh, for simple ways to help a farmer understand, if a cow is inseminated on fast, most probably if that uh, insemination was not successful, she'll come back on heat again maybe on the 21st or the 22nd. So we pick fast fl plus 21 days, that gives you 22. Then you start monitoring two days before to two days after. So you have like a five day window period when you can check. And then you do that for about two, three cycles. Just to make sure that we are keeping an eye on it. And then in the end, now we'll come and ask the vet to come and confirm. Uh, I was about to ask you that question. Eh? How you normally do the pregnancy check? Because I remember back uh, in our village, eh? mm -hmm. you will go there and uh, in the afternoon and you're busy trying to look uh, at the cow, whether you'll see the movement of... Uh, <laughs> is that the, the same thing well, you do Well, uh, at three, we check at around three months the, after the first trimester, and during that time, it's impossible to see that movement of the calf. So the, we'll, that's why we need the vet to come, and he'll uh, palpate the cow, and he'll feel if the uterus is carrying something. So once he confirms that for us, then at least we now record, we move the cow from being recently inseminated to a pregnant cow, and then now we start calculating the due date, the expected now, date. Now, le help me understand this. Eh? The moment you confirm the cow is pregnant, mm -hmm. we'll again shift it from the high-yielding animals to 
Yes, now by the second that, phase. The next yes, the second phase where now we have like the by that time also the milk you can see a natural drop. So by doing so, um what we notice one of the things that we've noticed is that the more the when cows produce a lot of milk, most of the time when they are recently they've recently calved down, they are rarely bullish. They are rarely aggressive. So they are the cows that suffer a lot from cows that are very aggressive. So by the time she's been confirmed, remember she had three she had gone maybe like two months after calving down, then she was inseminated, or maybe give it three months. So three months after calving down, then you add another three months to being confirmed, she has been giving milk for six months. Yes. So naturally her milk is very much low. So that time she's quite aggressive. She a lot of her energy is not in producing milk. It's in, you know, making her body and all that. So you want to move her now to where, move her away from the cows that are giving birth, that are having, like, they need much more quiet place. Bona Moses, I have really admired your farm setup. It's just amazing. Has it always been like this or for 21 years or, you know, it's something that uh, experience has taught you something, you have made the system better. Has it been that smooth for about 21 years? Well, as I told you that uh, for, for the first uh, maybe 14 years, you were keeping cows. <laughs> and uh, the last eight years, we've been doing dairy farming. No, wh what what do you mean by keeping cows and uh, the other one you have been dairy in dairy farming? What's for, the difference? Uh, keeping cows is when you have an animal which you hope it will give you milk in the evening. And uh, you hope you're feeding the right way. And you hope that uh, you're doing the thing, everything correctly. And you have very little information about how that animal works. And so anytime that somebody comes and says, Jaribu hi, you buy a truckload. Jaribu hi, you buy a truckload. Dairy farming is when you now get the science of how cows live. Are you agreeing with uh, Brian Bet that uh, dairy, uh, farming is generally a profession of hope? Every day is a hope, 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 hope. That defines really those people who keep cows. Yes, you see, like, uh, when you look at it, essentially, many times we don't really give the importance of understanding farming. Whether it is dairy farming, crop farming, we all the time think, hii kitu neza ingia hapo, niweke tu pesa kidogo, nilime kidogo, nitato, nitapata mapato. But when it comes to all forms of farming, and dairy farming is so crucial because animals giving milk are very sensitive. I encourage farmers that you have to stop shooting in the dark. You have to invest in information, invest in literature, invest in actually knowing what, take, what it takes for a cow to live well so that it can give you milk. Resources. Look for resources that can help you get from keeping a cow to being a dairy farmer who understands how that cow works, how it breeds, how it eats, and how its milk is produced. So is this a 21-year journey you are willing to share with us? Well, yes, I think it can help Mkulima Moja Mawili Pale Ivo. And uh, so, yes, I think Pale uh, Tumepitia, Mashida Mingi Sana, and uh, I'm hoping it can help someone. So we can have a sitting and do a yes, video on the same. Yes, we can do that. Dear viewer, we'll bring the story, the dairy journey, a 21-year dairy journey for Bona Moses Karaoke here at the House of Hope Dairy Farm in Siokimau. Asante and Karibu for the next video.